Hello everybody, I'm Rusty. I want to welcome you to Island Breeze Tropicals. So today we're going to be talking about one of the most special parts of bromeliad anatomy that really does set them apart from almost every other plant and it's how they take in water. So you know what? The sun is shining, the island breeze is blowing. It's time that you and I got growing. Come on, let's have some fun. And we're going to be talking about a structure called trichomes. So, okay guys, today we're going to be talking about one of the most important anatomical structures in our bromeliads, and that's called a trichome. Now, I know I said that when we were talking about the meristem, and that's kind of true, but the trichomes are really important because that's how most of your bromeliads are going to be getting their water needs met. Now, trichomes are appendages or protuberances, whatever you want to call them, that arise out of the epidermal or the outer layer of the plant cells on the leaves. Trichomes have a lot of different uh, functions and they are not unique to our bromeliads. They are throughout the plant world and they serve as protection in general for the plant. They will either guard it against herbivores. Oftentimes what they do is they will protect against ultraviolet radiation. That's the case here in this uh, Tillandsia. And they also importantly uh, function to stop a plant from losing its moisture. Not only that though, in our bromeliads, they enable the bromeliads to take in water. So okay, what does a trichome do specifically uh, in bromeliads? Well, they serve two purposes. One of them is if you see a silver color, it reflects light. It protects the plant against ultraviolet radiation. But mainly the trichomes allow our bromeliads to take in water. Now, they are on the outer leaf structure of a Tillandsia, and they are down in the cup in our tank type. Now, what I'm going to be showing you today are representations of what's on a Tillandsia, but they all work about the same way and they allow our bromeliads to take in water. By the way guys, we have rain on the roof so it's going to be a little noisy, so my apologies for that. So we can talk about it all day long, but I have some diagrams uh, that I want to show you uh, to uh, enable us to know how a trichome really works. What does it do? What does it look like? I have a really cool uh, photograph uh, of uh, trichomes on a Tillandsia. So before we get started and I show you um, the diagram and also the photograph of a trichome, I want to give a special shout out to chronodon.com who allow uh, people to use their diagrams and also a special shout out to my friends at the Bromeliad Society of Australia who were very kind enough to give me permission to share with you a wonderful photograph of a trichome on a Tillandsia. So why don't we get to it? I'm going to show you how a trichome works. So this is a cross section of what a uh, trichome looks like when it is dry. Um, it is composed of uh, the wing cells, ring cells right here, and the central disc cells. Now, again, this is in cross-section. I think you're going to be surprised what they really look like. But this is when it's dry, and it allows water to come down into here, and enter the leaf and it comes into these dome cells and this is what allows water when the Tillandsia is dry to get into the leaf. Now these central disc cells are fixed like this 
and they they do not move even though they will uh, swell up somewhat but if you can imagine and you're going to see it in the um, electron microscope uh, image of the trichome on the telangia this almost looks like the center of a flower now these are epidermal cells and as you can see they don't have any openings now they kind of do um, but they remain closed for the most part and that keeps this moisture right here uh, in the leaf so that it doesn't transpire moisture and dry out so this is the same cell again in cross-section and as you can see these wings right here have flattened out and also all of these cells right here have swelled and they have made it so that the passageway for water is somewhat restricted water can still get in but the important thing is that water or moisture from the leaf will have a hard time getting out and that's the important thing so this is what a trichome really looks like again I really want to thank the bromeliad society of Australia for allowing me to share this image with you I think that's really cool of them but take a look and I use the analogy of a flower and no these are not petals and this is not the center of the flower here but it does have that uh, semicircular shape and these right here right here are the wings and if you take a look here is one where the wings are uh, partially open and look at this one right here this is where uh, they are all the way open ready to receive moisture okay so this picture though really uh, is showing uh, trichomes as they are drying out so you can see that uh, on the epidermal cells right in here uh, there are no uh, droplets of water and you can look on up here and see the same thing so this is dry so these trichomes are uh, showing uh, the process of them uh, I wouldn't use the term desiccate but drying out and as they do so they open up that channel right here for water to get in and you can almost see how dark it is and right up here the same thing so when they are dry like this um, the wings and again that's what this is right here and this and this are open uh, they are more vertical and less horizontal and they allow water to get in to the leaf so this gives you a, a better view of the whole um, picture and you can see that they are in various stages of opening to allow moisture in um, so I want to go back to the uh, original drawing and show you the structures so we're going to take a look at this structure right here and those structures are the what's called the wings that part of the uh, trichome and then this part of the trichome right here are the central disc cells
So anyway, guys, that's it. That's how a trichome works. And uh, the trichome allows our bromeliads, not all of them, but a lot of them, to be epiphytic and take in water uh, through their leaves and their central tank so that we can have them in nature and enjoy them in our homes and gardens. So we just saw what Tillandsias look like up close and this is how they manifest on the real plant. And as you can see, this Tillandsia tectorum is very, very silver. And that's as a result of the trichomes. Uh, that also does protect the plant by reflecting off uh, UV radiation um, and it keeps it from drying out even further. Now, when talking about Tillandsias, just to remind you, it is the largest family in bromeliads, has the most species. Um, in general, if you get a silver bromeliad like this, it means that it is growing in uh, an arid or xeric environment, and it has more trichomes in order to capture uh, a smaller amount of water. And a greener Tillandsia uh, is indicative of having fewer trichomes and that indicates that it lives in a more messic or wetter environment. So anyway guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about trichomes and how they work and how important they are to our bromeliads. Now, I do want to remind you that even though I showed you uh, representations of Tillandsia trichomes, there are trichomes right down in the cup of our tank type uh, bromeliads and they do pretty much the same thing. And the trichomes enable our uh, bromeliads to become epiphytic and not rely on a root system in order to bring water into the plant. So no matter where you are, I hope your sun is shining. I hope you have an island breeze blowing. I know that you and I need to keep growing and have lots of fun. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.